Continue to study Interborough Express on all freight lines from Brooklyn to Queens. So let's get into this article. The governor wants to revive a proposal to repurpose miles freight lines between southern Brooklyn and Queens for a new public transit dubbed the Interborough Express. Let me zoom this in a little bit more. There you go. Today I'm announcing a bold idea. Quote unquote, take an old unused 40 mile long right away and create what we're calling the Interborough Express, a new rail service that will connect Brooklyn and Queens, Hochul announced at her State of the State address Wednesday. I'll direct the MTA to immediately commence an environmental review so we get that project rolling down the track. For me, I will say right now, this is a great move by the governor. Very, very good in terms of transit. Because besides that, she's not really doing a good job in other aspects or in other sectors of the political world in the state of New York. But for transit, this is a good, 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 good proposal. A 14-mile stretch, which would be considered to be the Interborough Express. The scheme would open tracks for, for passenger service from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, through southern and southeastern parts of Brooklyn up to Jackson Heights in Queens while still preserving the corridor for freight use. So it's going to be what would be the main line for the Long Island River because I do know that on the main line you also have freight trains that cross through there, which is true. It's a short version of the previous 24-mile proposal pushed by the Regional Plan Association, the RPA, since the 1990s known as the Triborough RX that would have run further north to Astoria, Randall's Island, and up into the Bronx to Co-op City. So this is the map of what would be the proposal of the Triborough Line, which extended all the way to Co-op City in the Bronx. So this is how it will look like. Well, th this was that plan. The, the previous 24 miles plan. So check it out. It would start from St. George, Staten Island, and it would go all the way up towards Co-op City in the Bronx. What is good here, first of all? St. George, there's lots of transit access. You have the, the Staten Island buses, you have the express buses, the Sims, and of course others out there. And you have the ferry terminal, which is great. Uh, Brooklyn Army Terminal, that would bring connections to the RNN. You have New York Trick, which would connect the N and D. You have Avenue I, which would connect the F. You have Avenue H. You have Brooklyn College. Uh, you have three stations for the Bushwick, New York areas. You have Metropolitan Avenue, which would be Middle Village. You have Jackson Heights, which would be Jackson Heights in Queens. Astoria, which would be the north part of Queens. You have Randall's Island. You got Hunts Point, Parkchester, and Co-op City. In terms of the Bronx, those are good connecting points because Hunts Point, Parkchester, and Co-op City, those have good transit access. And it has lots of bus routes over there, so that's good. But, as we look at what would be the proposed line, this is the alternative version. So, it would start from Bay Ridge. Um, it would make a couple of stops. So, for me, look, it would be Bay Ridge. The, I, the, I, which would be much more logical for me to look at. It would be Bay Ridge, have a stop on Bay Ridge, have a stop in Flatbush, right? Have a stop in the transit deserts. So have a stop in East Flatbush, have a stop in East New York, and have a stop in Brownsville. Um, have a stop in Ridgewood, have a stop in Middle Village, have a stop in Maspeth, and wrap it up in Woodside. For me... This is amazing because, look, it will alleviate the transit deserts that exist within the eastern part of Brooklyn, which is Brownsville, East Flatbush, New Lots, and, of course, Bushwick as well. And Ridgewood, too, even though Ridgewood is, like, in the border between Brooklyn and Queens, so that would be a good idea. It will also alleviate the transit deserts in Queens, like Maspeth and Middle Village, which would be a great, great change. All right, so let's see here. The version would serve between 74,000... Uh, slash or comma 88,000 weekday riders and connected spokes of up to 17 subway lines along with the LIRR as well. The MTA must study the project to see whether it would be best to build a train, light rail, or bus rapid transit along the corridor. For me, I just think they should just um, do a light rail in this case because at the moment it's it's a one track thing and it is common that for light rail it's one track unless we've seen double track for light rail which I haven't seen. And if you guys have seen, then you can always comment below. Um, 
or let's say it could be like another branch for Long Island Road because that one track that we've studied in the past and done in this channel in the what do you call it in the virtual discussion series which we've done proposals showing you guys what would be the projects of course or made up ones that my cameramen have done so with that in mind it, it could potentially be yet another ally the vlar branch because look that will be very good and look the problem here is that if they're gonna put electrification on it that's gonna cost a lot of money it should just rather be you know diesel powered the only thing is this since we're so curious and we're we're so concerned about the environment I, I just think they're probably going to electrify it, but then again, that's going to cost a lot of money. And electrifying a track, it could take a while, unless I'm proven wrong, but who knows what that would be. So with this new proposal, it would be a 40-minute end-to-end trip that customers will currently rely on buses stuck in traffic to commute within the boroughs and connect destinations like Brooklyn College. So check that out. Instead of having to travel an hour to go all the way downtown, catch the vibe, all the way back out again, you can take the R train or you live off the R train or the F train or the D train or the N train, said State Senator Andrew Gunardes, who represents parts of Southern Brooklyn to LA and New York. It would be a game changer. The roughly 900,000 residents along the line are also 71% minority community and one third are 1.5 times below the federal poverty rate. So the MTA previously commissioned a more preliminary feasibility study with infrastructure firm AECOM in early 2020 to operate transit alongside freight rail service along the so-called Barry's Line, which the RPA at the time estimated would be $1 to $2 billion. And hopefully the project will be completed faster than the state's notoriously slow transit expansions because it will be built on an existing right away. So here we have... Lots of comments. I'm surprised because you usually don't get that much comments for AM New York articles. So look, coming from Shorts, YT, Transit Gaming, think of all the possibilities of this line. We could possibly have high-speed inner-city rail service between Brooklyn and Queens for the first time. Now, I, I would disagree with that because to have high-speed, that would be better for interstate service. So something like Amtrak. Because to have high-speed... It has to be a really, really long distance route. And if it's going to be only 14 miles, I don't know how that's going to be high speed. I just think they're this person is confused that it should just rather be um, like a railroad service instead of a subway. Because 14 miles, and judging how it looks like in the map, I just think it should be more like a railroad. Or something similar to like the Staten Island Railway. Because if you, if you look at the map over here, that kind of has like something similar like the Staten Island Railway because Staten Island Railway is not even that 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 depth when it comes down to like mileage. It's really short. And in a sense, who knows? It probably will be something like the Staten Island Railway. And if that's the case, then trains should go at least 60 to 80 miles per hour. No excuses. Since it's a short line and since more than likely it could probably be like not that much stations. You never know. But if it's going to be high speed, I don't know. That's going to be quite impossible. I don't think, for example... If we're going to go from, let's say, for example, the stops are Woodside, Massapest, Middle Village. There is no possibility where a train is going to go 80 to 100 miles per hour. I just don't see that happening. To get to and from Co-op City uh, by direct subway connection will be a huge plus. And look, and you notice that they say subway. I, I just think it's probably going to be like a, like a mini railway or a railroad. Like I said, this this 14 mile uh, corridor will likely be something like the railway, Staten Island Railway. Because look, the railway for Staten Island, th those those trains sometimes go fast, they go slow. But if you go on the express, I'm telling you, that thing goes insanely fast. I think that this is a great idea and it will give a tremendous boost to the communities it will serve. I don't know what he means by that or she. I love it. I remember the Interborough Parkway, now considered as Jackie Robinson, but I still call it the original name, as I do with all the all the change names in New York's bridges. Bring back old New York, this new New York stinks. The 7 line needs to be replaced by an underground line. I noticed that that, that viewer on top will let this comment. Let the comment again. For me, this is great. This is amazing because this will reinvigorate my hopes and dreams that that track that i see in avenue h which is around here will be used back in service again 
that will be amazing if that happens. For me, that will be amazing because look, it will alleviate lots of transit deserts. It will alleviate lots of transit deserts. And you guys notice once again, it's always this corner that I always mention. Oh, there's no transit access. Oh, how much I feel bad for those people. With this rapid transit route, it's going to make a good impact. It's going to make an amazing impact. I guarantee you it. Because this is what we need. This is this is transit projects that will um, further improve transit access here in the five boroughs. I'm telling you right now. There are people out there that can't afford cars. Cars are expensive. And for cars, it's a lot of maintenance. You have to do um, oil checks, change the brakes, put air on the tires, constantly check whether or not the engine is good. And of course, this shouldn't really apply for newer cars because for newer cars, you just have to take it to the dealer and they'll do the job. So what I'm saying, though, is for people that have like really old cars or cars that were uh, purchased, I guess, before 2010. Because look, people, people can't afford new cars either. So what I'm saying here makes particularly more sense because people out there probably buy not the best of cars and only the cars that they could afford, of course. And look... The fact that sometimes you have to wait for traffic, you always have to pump it up with gas, you have to inspect it, you have to get registration. Look, all this costs lots of money and people don't have time for that. So that is why people rely more on transit and they have to rely on the MTA. Three subway lines are suspended because of COVID shortages. Look, this is, this is something that I don't understand. Look, train operators are inside a cab, right? How in the world... Will there be surges if the if the people that operate the trains, right, they are inside the cab? There is no possibility where they're going to be feared of possibly getting COVID. Because look, as far as I know, I believe in the MTA, they probably have requirements for people to take the vaccine, right? And, for, and to wear masks, right? But who knows? What if, like, there is so many um, MTA workers that don't, um, that didn't take the vaccine and... We're probably laid off because of it. That probably could be the possibility why there are shortages. Or or what if it's because people are just sick? What if all of a sudden lots of uh, train operators and conductors are sick? So look, because of this, right now, the B, Z, and the W, and of course, from, what I, from one of my viewers, they also said that express service is cut. That is a big, big, big disappointing disappointment. And at this point, hey, what's going to happen from here? Because look, the last time that we have got like limited service was, of course, during the pandemic, 2020. So this could be another reason why we could be possibly aiming for yet another episode of what was a very disappointing and depressing 2020. Yes, I know I'm kind of mixing things a little bit up with both COVID and transit, but this is mainly a transit video. But again... Lots of people have already expressed their frustration with the fact that there's no express service in the subways. Um, lots of people are still taking the train to go to work. And these same people more than likely are complaining that the service is not that good because of the fact that you have lots of lines that are suspended, right? And look, check that out. A whooping 52 canceled runs. 44 were on New Year's Eve. And it was affecting express bus routes. So take this out. Subway ridership compared to pre-pandemic levels slowed in December as a new variant came in, which it brought down to 50% of ridership. And almost 75 in November. Check that out. Bus rates in 2019 also down from similar peaks last month, but remained more than 60%. So that at least is a good stat, right? What is not really a good stat is this. 1,000 workers out. Check that out. Of the 67,000. And for those 67,000, respect, because in the midst of the pandemic, they're still giving their thoughts. First dose vaccination rates, 80%. Um, and on this day, it's now 73, check them out. So to wrap it up with this video, the first part of it, very positive, obviously, because I was very happy to see this. And when this came out, I was like, oh my god, this must get on the community section. This must get on the community section. So this is the future of what will be the MTA. Look, the future is going to be the um, Eastside Access, Omni, 
then this could be the future of the MCA, which will be absolutely fantastic. If if the study is done, if it's approved, if the funding is there, and if people, if the communities that are going to be not impacted but benefited by this, if they all say yes, then bravo. This will reinvigorate that same track that I've been saying so many times that should be used for service. That should be, because look, it, make, it just makes sense because look, where, where you see over here, where the mouse is pointing at, Bay Ridge, this is where, from what I assume, the Brooklyn Army, the Brooklyn Army Terminal is. And mind you, this same track is used for freight service only, and that's it. And since this study was done, since this article was posted, since the governor said this in her first day of the state address, I would say right now, this was a good way to start. Only this was a good place to start for her state of state address, because besides that and other stuff, like stuff like COVID, she's not doing a good job. She's not doing a good job. But in the case of the state of the state address, transit wise, this I would say right now is a very, very good start for me because this is good. But besides that, look, she has to do so much work within the MCA. She just has to. She just has to do a lot of work in the MCA. But this is a good start regarding projects, proposals, that specific topic for the MTA. This is a great start. But other things that, of course, disappoint a lot of people once again. Like this right here. And of course, subway crime. Subway crime, look, this is something that she also should have mentioned in her, uh, what do you call it, in her state of the state address. Which, I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't mention it. Because of course, particularly in her opinion, she assumes that the subways are safe and peachy keen. Which, in my opinion, it's really not. So, again, something must be done with this. Because look, I understand so many stuff is going on. COVID cases, the fluoronavirus. All this uh, stuff going on. And then you have the subway lines getting reduced because of this. Oh my goodness. There's just so many things. So with that in mind, guys, I'll wrap it up in this quick transit video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, like, share, comment. And if you guys enjoyed the video, share it out. And let other people know about this great channel. So with that in mind, thanks for watching.